Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I will be trying out not one, but two brand new UV lamps from Let's Resin and I love both of them, so I can't wait to show you those. I will also be making some notebook covers for Christmas presents because Christmas is coming and it's that time I need to start preparing. So you will see me make two notebooks today and I hope you will like them. If that all sounds interesting, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Let's look at the advanced UV light first. I was very impressed as soon as I opened the box to see that it was blue and shiny and very cute looking, very different to the usual UV lamps. So it comes in two parts and you can use just one on its own or you can join them together to make a two-sided UV lamp so it cures from above and below, which I think is amazing. I'm really pleased that I've got one that does that because sometimes when you're using a clear mould it really helps to be able to cure from underneath at the same time and as you just saw they fit together with a magnetic clip and so yeah it's like magic love that and it also has a tray that slides into the grooves in the side of the lamp as you'll see here and that the tray bit I think it's covered in like a film you know to protect it and I, d I actually left that on but I think if you take it off obviously the light's going to penetrate even better but I thought if I leave it on it's going to protect it for longer anyway that tray fits in there and then you just put the top on and you turn your light on when you're ready to cure and that's it isn't that cool? I really do love that. It's also got three time functions. It has two minutes, three minutes and five minutes. You press it once for two minutes, twice for three minutes and three times for five minutes, which is really a bonus because a lot of UV lamps don't have a five minute function. So as I mentioned you can use it as a two-sided UV lamp as you can see here or you can take it apart and just use one side depending on what your project is so that's very good. What I would say though is because of the design of it the UV light is very much exposed and you have to find try and you know not look at it because it's so bright and you don't want to damage your eyes so I would suggest either you know avoid looking at it or wear eye protection when you're using it because you don't want the UV light affecting your eyes so that's the only thing that I would change oh no I'll tell you what I would change I would add a display you know a countdown display on there if I could change it but other than that I absolutely love it I love everything else about it I think it's so different and very much better than the usual style of UV lamp and like everything else from Let's Resin it comes with a detailed manual that answers all the questions you might have so yeah that's a bonus too so the second lamp that I received is the UV Light Pro, which I think looks like a little spaceship. I love it. It's very cute. And yeah, it's very similar to the other one in the respect that it has the two minute, three minute and five minute option. And so that's all the same. The only difference really is the shape. And it's quite large, actually. It's about the size of my hand and it works just beautifully just the same as the other one it's just more simple it's only one-sided so yeah I love that one too I actually used the other one in today's video but I just wanted to show you this one as well which is equally as good just simpler so for the technique I'm doing today 
all I needed to do was put lots and lots of dots of UV resin onto the mould. So that's very easy. I would say though you need to be quite careful to make sure the UV resin comes out in a drip and then you let it finish dripping before you take the bottle away because otherwise you'll get a long thin line joining your two dots. So be careful with that. I'm sorry you can't see it very well from the angle you're looking at. You'll see it a bit better as it progresses. I'll speed it up and you'll see it filled up a little bit better. But it's very simple, just lots of dots of different sizes. And as I said before, once I had finished, all I needed to do was put the lid back on and then it was ready to cure from both sides. And I only cured it for 10 seconds. And that was because I needed the UV resin to be still tacky for the next step. And because it was only 10 seconds, I had to count in my head, counted 10 giraffes. <laughs> and yeah, after I counted 10 giraffes, it was ready to turn off and take the top off again. And then we could add the chameleon powders. I chose three colours that I thought my granddaughter would like because this is going to be for my granddaughter. Oh, here I'm just checking that it's set enough to add the powders but still tacky. So that's what I was doing there. Anyway, now I'm applying the powders with a big soft brush. I'm putting plenty on and just dotting it on top of the dots. <laughs> and then I choose another one on the next layer and then... The third one will be the whiter one at the bottom. And then once all the powder is loosely dropped onto the spots, I can use my thick, soft brush to just kind of blend them all together and make sure the whole of the mould is completely covered. And I've got to say, I find this step so enjoyable, just brushing it all on and making it nice and shiny. It's very relaxing and quite therapeutic. I love it. I could do it all day. <laughs> so, yeah, I just kept going until it was all covered and then I brushed off the excess. And then that was ready to be filled up with epoxy resin. But before I did that, I did cure it under the lamp for about five minutes and yeah, just to make sure that that UV resin was fully cured. And the fact that it can cure from underneath was really helpful in this instance because it wouldn't get through very well at the top. The resin I'm using today is Let's Resin's Fast Cure Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio resin and you measure it by volume. So this resin is ready in four to eight hours, depending on the thickness in which you pour it and your room temperature and all of that. But because I was doing something very thin, I actually left it until the next day, you know, just to make sure it wasn't too bendy when I demolded it. I had to estimate how much I would need and I went for three ounces of A and three ounces of B because I've done the larger one as well, which you'll see in a moment. It looks a little bit bubbly and that's because it's very cold in my house at this time of year. But the Let's Resin resin is very good at degassing all by itself. And so it's I don't really worry too much about the bubbles. I did warm it up a little bit in a warm water bath beforehand, but not quite enough. <laughs> anyway, once I'd poured them both out, I gave it a good slow stir for about three minutes. And then I added a generous amount of seashell mica powder, which is also from Let's Resin. And as you can see, I poured in a good amount there and gave it a good mix. I wanted to go for quite a neutral colour because one of my book covers is pink and one's blue and I needed a colour that would go with both of them. So yeah, that's why I chose that colour. And it's actually one of my favourites from the set. I think it's beautiful, the seashell colour. And once that was mixed, it was just a case of pouring it in until they were full. You do need to be careful not to overfill these. It's very easy to think you haven't got enough in there and to keep going and then find that once it levels out, you've got too much. Oh, and here, what you can see me doing is just putting my levelling table underneath the mat, which I'd forgotten to do before. So, yeah, you need to make sure your worktop is very level. 
So there we go, the resin's going in and it's very simple. This is such a simple project and one that would be suitable for beginners, but the end result looks so impressive. It, you know, you wouldn't think it was a beginner's project. It really does work well doing the UV resin technique on this. So they were cured eight hours later, but they were very bendy, which is perfectly normal with epoxy resin. It tends to stiffen up much better once it's out of the mould. Uh, yeah, I don't know why, if, but if you leave it in the mould and wait for it to stop being bendy, you'll be waiting a long time. You do need to get it out, but I, I left it until the next day and it was definitely a bit stiffer. So let's have a look. Look at that. The edges are a bit messy, that's all right, I'm going to clean those up. But the 3D effect you get from those drips of UV resin looks so good, doesn't it? It looks like lots and lots of bubbles and I think my granddaughter will love that. So let's have a look at the blue one. This one's for my daughter, um, so yeah, they'll both have one. I hope they're not going to be jealous of each other's books. I hope I've chosen the right one <laughs> for the right person. Anyway, let's have a look. And there we go. I prefer the pink one. I think the colours blended better with the pink one. But I still love that. I think it's beautiful so I'm very pleased and now all I need to do is clean up the edges so here you can see me using a deburring tool which is a very handy tool because it's quite safe as well you're not so likely to cut yourself as you would if you were using a craft knife to do this you can also use a nail file but the bits that I had overhanging the edge of the mould were actually quite thick and that's why I chose to use my deburring tool. So yeah, I just went over it a few times just like you're peeling potatoes and then it was done. And I did finish it off with my nail file as well just to make sure it was completely smooth with no sharp bits to, you know, cut my granddaughter's fingers. That's the last thing I would want. So yeah, and then that was ready. I could have used the moulds again to make the backs but I was being a bit impatient so I cut the backs out of some thick um, cardboard craft board and covered them in some fancy vinyl that would complement the front covers and so th then the back covers were done nice and quickly. I've used some eyelets in the holes on the ones that I've already done as you can see. I'm just going to do some so you can see how I did it. These actually came free with my bead mould kit and they're actually called bead caps but I think they're just the same as eyelets and they fit in really, really snugly. So much so that I just needed to use a hammer just to finish them off, you know, bash them in. And then they were really secure because they were quite tight. So that worked out really well. I don't know what size they were. I'll have to measure them. But yeah, it's as simple as that. Bash them in and they're ready. And then I could go to the next step, which was adding the wording. I wanted to keep it simple so I just did their names and I did this on my Cricut, my Cricut Maker, cut them out and made the decals so yeah and then that's it really. Put them onto my transfer tape and then put them onto the books and gave them a good rub and then took the transfer tape off and they were done. And then it was time to assemble it. I bought a refill off Amazon. It's an A7 refill and I thought it was quite pretty for a child. And so those are the ones I've got for this notebook. And it's just a case of putting them all together and then taking the small book rings and threading them through. And I'm going to fast forward through that because... Yeah, you don't need to see me do all six of those jump rings, do you? The, not jump rings, book rings. But yeah, they're, they're quite easy. You just open them up. They've got a hinge and you thread them through. Once you've got the first one done, the rest are really easy because it keeps the rest of the holes aligned. And there it is, all finished. And yeah, I think it looks really cute. I'm really happy with it. And that's one Christmas present ticked off the list. I did exactly the same thing for the 
larger notebook which was for Holly and I think she's going to love it. I hope she will anyway. I think they look really nice together which is good because they're both going to be in the same house and maybe they'll be stored together. They make a nice pair and yeah I used an A5 refill for this one and I did use my corner punch on those corners on the left hand side just to make them fit the you know the covers better because before I cut the corners off they were sticking out the edge you know where the corner is and I didn't like it so luckily I had a, a corner punch for the corners so we've come to the end of the video now that they're finished. I hope you've been impressed by the Let's Resin UV lamps because they were really brilliant. And I really hope that it was useful to see how I made the notebooks. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you again next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.